to help manage the performance and some of the resource costs when using the Chaos Destruction System, it has a handy built-in set of functionalities called clustering, which is what we'll be looking at in this video, so that we can get a better idea of how we can get some control over just how complex or simple the destruction of our meshes should be. So I'm going to go through the whole process. I'm just going to go back to the modes section and enable the fracture menu here. I do have a new mesh. So if you followed in the previous video, I was just using a cube. For this one, I'm going to use something a little bit more detailed as I found in between uh, running tests and playing around with things. This does work a little bit better. Having something with a, a general higher poly count and the different shapes seems to help. So I'd recommend importing something into your project or follow along with a mesh that you already have. And I've already covered the basics of setting up a new fracture. So I won't go too in depth on that one, as you can see the previous video for those details if you needed. So for this, I'm just going to go new and I'm going to save this in the chaos folder. And I'll just name this one chaos statue. So this will create another geometry collection for us. And I've just created a new folder structure in between the videos to keep things a little bit easier to follow. For this, I'll just stick with the standard uniform fracture. So I'll go uniform. We can see here the kind of information that this will be cutting. So we can use again the random seed to change this up. I've increased this previously to 80. So this is a, uh, remembered the Veronoi pattern that I want to use. The default is 20. And you can go with a kind of lower default if you wanted. But again, this is going to be about clustering and putting some of the larger groups of chunks together in those clusters. So this is going to be helpful to have something a little bit higher, not too high to kind of push that performance boundary, but high enough that the system will easily be able to see where groups of these destroyed pieces can be clustered together. So again, in testing, I found that 80 on both of these works fairly well. With that done, I'll just hit fracture. So this is pretty much what we covered in the previous video. This is where we were. We had something where if we press play, this will fall into the world and crumble into its pieces. Okay, so I've just moved that around and put that into view. So now when we press play, we can see that happening properly. The next thing we want to do then, so we currently have our levels. We have level zero and level one. Level zero is essentially the statue. So if we select all, and I quite like this view where you just get the, the white lines rather than the colors, then we can see that level zero is when everything is combined. So this is before destruction. So if we ex try to explode this, then nothing's going to happen. If we go to level one, this is where we can start seeing the fractures coming in. And again, if we explode this, we can see what the final result will look like when this has been destroyed. So what we want to do now is we want to take some of these pieces and essentially make them into kind of smaller chunks when this happens. So the idea of this is that the initial destruction will have a certain threshold and it will hit that first. So the cluster will be put together. And then when that gets hit multiple times as well, and that threshold's met, then it will break again. And it stops that initial explosion or piece of destruction from causing too much of a processing overhead with potentially hundreds of pieces flying off. And we can limit that to be the tens of pieces flying off instead. So I'm going to put this back down, uh, unexplode that. And looking at this, in fact, we probably could have went for something a little bit higher than 42 uh, because a lot of that Verona pattern wasn't being hit. We actually only have 42 pieces, but I think this will be fine. We'll still get the, the point across. So for clustering now, what we want to do is go to the cluster tab here. And the easiest way is just to hit the auto cluster and it's called auto, but it won't actually do anything automatically. What it's going to do is give us an option and this will allow us to define how many pieces we want the cluster to combine everything into. So we currently have 42 pieces when this is fully exploded. So if we uh, take this down to half, we'll set this to 21. And then if we auto cluster this, it's gonna take those 42 pieces we can see we now have at level one, which only has 21 pieces. So if we select level one and explode this, what we can, uh, the first thing we'll note, that I think the easiest thing to notice is that the wings are taking up fewer pieces. So if we change this to level two, those wings are uh, five pieces there. And at level one, I think it's only two or three. So it's clustered a few of those pieces together. So now if we don't reach the maximum threshold, first of all, it's gonna break into this smaller number 
of destructible pieces here. Now we can do this again, so if you wanted something even smaller on the initial destruction, we can go back into cluster, we'll press auto again, and we'll set this down to roughly half again. So I'll just say 10 and auto cluster this. And again, you can see that wing is now gonna come off all in one piece. The second wing will come off in a slightly unfortunate shape. That wouldn't really be how it cracks, but it's doing its best. Uh, and then we've got the legs and the pieces there. So again, we can see this is now broken down into just 10 pieces. Level two, we have our 21. And then level three, we have our 40 pieces. So that's the basics of setting up the clusters. The next way that we want to use this is if we go over to our details panel, we can go to our clustering option we can see just here, and we have an array of damage thresholds. So at the moment we have one or zero, so this is going to be the first level of clustering. So if we press play, it was kind of hard to see there, but we can see that by default on the first hit, it's just clustering in to, I think that's going to be level zero. So that's our 10 pieces. And then as it keeps falling, it's breaking into the next pieces of those cluster levels. So we can see that initially it just snaps into one big piece of wing over here on the left, for instance. So what we can do is we can control the damage threshold that every piece will need to take to be broken into the next level of that clustering. So to do that, we're going to need to add the number of uh, array elements, which is going to be our four elements. And then what we can do is start plugging in some numbers. And the documentation recommends putting in the higher numbers for the lower thresholds. And then as you go down, you're going to need lower damage thresholds to, to reach those limits. We also don't need the max cluster level to 100. We only have three levels, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. So we can change that. And as per the documents, they are using ranges in about the thousands, and I found that works quite well as well. So similar, what I'm going to do is set the, uh, the highest value in the zero array, and then kind of half that as we go through. So with that done, what we can do is we can test what will happen now. So in fact, the first threshold is too high, and that means that this didn't cluster at all. It didn't even break. It may mean that we can just drag this up a little bit higher, and maybe if this falls from a further distance, then that will cause it to break, but it's just bouncing around. So this is where you just need to come in and start playing around with values. So you might find that the first threshold can only be something like two or 3,000. Okay, and now we could see that the 3,000 did work as long as there's a fairly decent distance for that to fall, like so. And then what you want to do is then go through and tweak how you want the further cluster levels to also be working. So we can see that at this stage, it isn't reaching any of those other cluster levels which means the threshold is too high for it to filter down through to level one, two, and three, meaning that we're not going to see the higher levels of the destruction. Okay, so this is one of those things though, I've just been plugging numbers in and kind of testing and playing around. This is gonna be something that you want to play around with and get that kind of feeling right, but that's how clustering and the damage threshold works. And having the damage threshold ready is gonna be really useful as we go into future videos where we look at how we can cause damage and actually control these outside of just allowing it to drop and hit the floor. That's also gonna mean we need to look at fields and I want to kind of cover these as separate topics. But before we get into those, I thought it would be useful to know how the clustering works so that we can take our clustered mesh directly into the fields and the damage topics. So the final thing that we're going to change is if we go into the asset that we've created, our uh, chaos geometry collection, the other thing that is uh, usually changed in the documentation, we want to change the implicit type from box to level set so that this constantly reloads. It also means that basically we'll watch the way that this crumbles in a moment. It just takes into account the actual geometry that's being broken when this falls apart. So if we're going to take a look at that, uh, if we quickly remember what box looked like, it doesn't look too great. There's a kind of weird fakeness where everything breaks apart based on the position it is when the initial contact is made. Now what we want is something that looks a little bit more realistic, I suppose. So if we change this to level set and try again, we can see this kind of crumbles more around itself. So there's a little bit of a bounce there that makes that somewhat hard to see, but you can see that rather than kind of flying outwards, it crumbles down around itself. It looks more like gravity's taking a proper effect. Another thing we have here is there's a lot of uh, bouncing and rolling, and that is something again that we'll fix when using fields. There isn't very much we can do to just stop that without using fields. Fields will control things like how the individual pieces react and respond when they have been fractured. For the moment, the only thing we can really do is add some density to this, which will kind of push it to the floor a little bit more. 
something like this if we set the mass as density and then set the mass to something like a thousand again this is something you want to test based on the asset that you're working with but when we press play now you can see that kind of falls a little bit faster it looks more like rock or metal or something falling as it should and you can see some of the pieces are staying a little bit more stationary when they hit the floor because it has that extra density it still looks a little bit like it's twitching and jumping around which isn't great but again that will be fixed in future videos and another thing that people may be asking and wondering it may not happen anymore because of the thresholds we've set but even if this is resting on the floor which i need to do by not having it exploded so even though that's resting perfectly on the floor you can see this instantly crumbles even though there's essentially no impact or force being applied to that so this is something else we'll be using the forces system for which is part of the chaos package to control how the actual geometry collection should be working it's something that we can assign just over here in the field sorry i keep saying forces it's the fields collection that we'll be using to control and stop dynamic objects from essentially just exploding immediately but with that done, that is the cluster system covered. We have a fairly decent geometry collection set up. So we've added the, the mass and just made the fracturing look a little bit better, especially the physics when that is falling apart. So there's a lot to look at in the new chaos system, which is why rather than doing it in one big video, I kind of wanted to break this into its own specific topics, especially so that if people wanted to just come in and get one very small part of the overall system as a kind of documentation, I suppose you can come in, jump out and pick and choose what you wanted to learn. So I'll leave this video here. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel to grow and to get the content in front of as many people that it can help as possible. If you wanted to be kept up to date with any content coming from the channel on a weekly basis covering many things game dev related then do consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell so that you get those notifications and just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the names scrolling down the side just here all of the patreon supporters who make the weekly content like this possible so as ever a huge thank you for your continued support of the channel and as ever thanks for watching and i will see you all next time